Hey guys, I'm here with five best practices for news post creation at your organization. News is seen as kind of an intimidating thing. You can start out with a blank canvas and get a little bit overwhelmed and a lot of people do it in many different ways. So we wanted to walk through five best practices to help guide your hand in making those things and help you reach a wider audience and really convey your information in a meaningful manner. So the first tip is to create a SharePoint site for each news category that you have at your organization. You'll be able to create news in any communication site that you create. It's important to decide which sites are gonna be exclusively used to create news. Now that's not to say you can't have other content outside of news in those sites, but to break out those news categories, you wanna do it per site for each category. So a few reasons you wanna do it this way is because creating a site allows you to assign an owner to that site if you have different news owners creating different categories of news. And even if you have the same owner creating news across multiple sites, at the end of the day, you'll be able to roll up those news and refine by those categories based on the site that they come from. So in many cases, it makes sense for the SharePoint site to do both of these things. A safety site can manage both the safety news and be a resource for safety policies and other sorts of content related to the safety department. And it's really nice that the safety owner can manage all of this content in one area. So there's still a lot of users that like to manage all of their news creation in one site. You can still go about doing it that way, but understand in modern, the modern news roll-up web parts filter and refine news by the site that it comes from. So it's not easy to break out news based off of some sort of category that's not really on the news article or post itself. It is based off of where the news comes from. So you really should break them out across multiple sites. So another best practice is skipping over the fluff. You wanna add details and information that are relevant and important to your consumers that are reading this news. You don't want to barricade them with walls of text and overload them with content that they're just gonna glaze over and decide not to read in the end. You wanna give them the details of the events, the times, the things, the people, all of the content that they really care about that they came to read, if they're, especially if they're searching for your news article. You shouldn't be afraid of white space and having a lot of padding around your content because that's kind of more of a modern look and feel. But what's really important is that you have the content that matters to them present, ready to deliver to them. For example, I made a news article on a vaccination shot notice. This might be something that happens annually at a business, but really people are already aware of the things about this news article. What they care about is finding what time they need to be there, what days they can go to get their vaccination shot, and some of the details, if there's health-related things that they need to be aware of, or if they're eligible to get something like that. So these are things people are already looking for in a frequent event like this, or in a frequent news post like this. So a user that created this might have simply copied and pasted it and added a whole bunch of information relevant to HR that's not relevant to the user, and the user might not even choose to read it because there's just so much content that they glaze over. So you can see that the way this is formatted, we pulled out all of the important information out of the body, and it works way better for the user to find what they need to very quickly, and it wouldn't work as well if it was buried inside and they had to go looking for the actual details in the body. So another best practice, if you want your users to do something with your news article, use call to action. So I have an example news article here for benefits registration. Again, this is something that probably happens every year in an organization, and I wanna walk through this, kind of ask the question, what do we want people to do when they land on this news post? There's some text here that says you have a form to submit by a certain deadline. There's an announcement at the top, and, and some of the more finer details about health versus dental versus optical. So you can see that there's an email me button. Um, there's my profile down there so you can get in touch with me in a couple different ways. And then there's a button to get into your health portal. Maybe that's where you have to submit that form to. But these are all things that could have been hyperlinks that were buried in the text body that we decided to make the button web part or the call to action web part really take the center stage here and show the user that this is where you go to do this specific thing with this post. So a lot of common scenarios about needing users to go to a certain destination, open a certain document, download a certain file, or email somebody. All great examples of things that you can put right onto the page and have the user access them directly there while they're reading. So another tip is to actually store your images in SharePoint. This seems like an obvious tip, and kind of a given when it comes to people who have used SharePoint for a long time, but we really wanna explain why you should be doing this. So although SharePoint allows for you to link out to external sites and to other areas to 
bring in an image and have that connection there, that image can always break or get deleted if you're not the one in charge of that file. So bringing your images into SharePoint to live alongside your news articles ensures that they won't break because you own the images in that SharePoint site and that your users have sites to see those images. You don't wanna put your images in a different site that users may not have access to because when they land on the news article, it's not gonna show the image. In modern SharePoint, they've made it really easy to adjust focal points of images. But again, this is a mobile friendly environment. So you wanna pick images that are don't have borders that aren't filled with text that's gonna get cut off because once you upload them, when you look at it on mobile or on a tablet, as opposed to a desktop, it's gonna look and feel a little bit different on each of those devices. And that's kind of the intent is to not have to worry about sizing or scaling your images, just getting them up there so that they provide an overall theme to your news posts. So I'm gonna say that a second time. Do not put text in your images beforehand. It's gonna get cut off, it's not accessible, and there's way better ways to do it in SharePoint. So one more best practice I have is using page templates to create a consistent feel and look across all of your sites in your organization. So you may already know that you can create a copy of any page or news post in SharePoint with a click of a button. That's pretty cool. People like to duplicate news articles or news posts that might have the same look and feel and just tweak the content because all the content moves over into that copy. Um, we're gonna take that a step further and say that you can create a page template of any of those pages also. So when you create a news post from scratch, instead of getting a blank page, you get something that has web parts and a title and an image already included, ready to for you to fill out the rest of it. So let's say I wanna make a page template of this vaccination shot notice. I can go in and create a new copy of it update some of the fields that I want. Maybe I need to remove some of the dates out there and just leave the filler so I can put new dates in. I'm just gonna call it page template for now. Okay, so you can see I just published a new page and when you publish a new page, you get an option to save it as a template. So when you click that button, now I'm landing on the actual template, which is stored in a different folder in the page library. But now whatever I do to this page is gonna update a template from now on. And that template will be an option that I have when I go to click and create a new news post in this site. So if I wanna put in a title to say, enter title here, say I have some users that are gonna be using this template, but they don't really know what all these fields are for. I might wanna add some sections here. Maybe each news category has a different look and feel, so I wanna build out some of these page layouts differently for each site. But we can throw a couple web parts in here. That looks pretty good. And when I click Save Page Template button at the top here, now on my site, if I go back into the page library, under Site Pages here, you'll see that SharePoint created a new template section, new templates folder for me to go back to this news template if I ever need to update it. But if I click new here and go to a new news post from the home page, for example, now I get this as an option to pick as a template along with those other built-in options. And I can go in and edit this if I need to, set it as a default template and just delete it if I end up not needing it anymore. One thing about these things that I don't like is you do have to create them for each individual site. So page templates are independently managed within each site and they're not really easy to move around. I wish there was a better way. Hopefully one will come along. If they do, um, I'll definitely be writing about it. So those are five best practices that we wanted to show you guys today to help set you guys up for success in creating news posts and really communicating with your audience at your organization. And we'll be writing a lot more content about this in the future. So like and subscribe, ring the bell down below, add comments and, and let us know what you guys think of this video. This is Matt and I'm signing off. Thank you.